Hey there, awesome people. Welcome back to the channel. Your go-to for stories of bold innovation, rising economies, and Africa's future now taking flight. Today's episode is absolutely monumental. We're diving deep into Ethiopia's game-changing drone manufacturing revolution. You may have heard whispers of Aroa Bay, also known as Skywind Aeronautics Industry, now roaring onto the scene as Ethiopia's very own drone production powerhouse. And let me tell you, this isn't just another company making gadgets. This is about sovereignty, economic resilience, and the rebirth of a nation that refuses to be held back by geography or history. Back in March of 2025, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed inaugurated Skywind Aeronautics Industry in Addis Ababa. This was not some small workshop. Tucked away in a corner, it was a full-scale, state-backed factory dedicated to designing and producing drones for both civilian and military purposes. The facility was launched with one mission, to put Ethiopia in charge of its own technological destiny. We're talking drones equipped with artificial intelligence, counter-drone systems, advanced sensors, and the ability to handle surveillance, defense, agriculture, and even infrastructure monitoring. It's an ecosystem in the making, one that can employ hundreds directly and thousands more indirectly through logistics, research, training, and support. Now let's pause for a second and ask, why does this matter so much? First, because Ethiopia has long relied on imported drones, mostly from Israel, China, and even Iran. But that reliance created vulnerability. If foreign suppliers cut access, Ethiopia would be left exposed. Skywind flips that situation upside down. For the first time, drones are being built by Ethiopians, for Ethiopians, on Ethiopian soil. That's sovereignty in action. Second, it's about economic diversification. Ethiopia isn't just buying drones anymore. It's building an entire industry around them. The plant has the capacity to produce hundreds of drones a year, and the ripple effects across the economy are huge. When you produce locally, you save foreign exchange, reduce the cost of imports, and create meaningful jobs that build skills. In a landlocked nation where access to ports is always a headache, this shift to local production is not just smart, it's necessary. And third, Ethiopia is thinking beyond its own borders. Prime Minister Abiy made it clear, the goal is not just to use these drones locally, but to export them. Imagine that Ethiopia, once associated only with aid dependency, now positioning itself as a drone exporter to other countries in Africa and beyond. Already, Nigeria has shown interest in partnering with Ethiopia to co-develop indigenous drones. This could become the foundation for pan-African collaboration in high-tech industries, reducing the continent's reliance on outside powers. Now let's talk about something people often overlook Ethiopia is landlocked. That single fact shapes almost everything about its economy. With no direct access to the sea, the country has to rely on its neighbors for ports. That means imports take longer, cost more, and depend on sometimes tense relationships with transit nations. For years, this was seen as a curse. But what Ethiopia is showing now is that being landlocked can be turned into motivation. Instead of importing everything, why not build it locally? That's the strategy. Whether it's drones, textiles, or even advanced infrastructure, Ethiopia is saying, if we can't rely on others, we'll rely on ourselves. And the applications for these drones are not limited to the military. Ethiopia is developing drones for agriculture, for environmental monitoring, for infrastructure inspections, and for logistics. In farming, drones can monitor crop health, optimize irrigation, and reduce waste. In infrastructure, Drones can inspect the massive Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, power lines, and transport corridors. In conservation, drones can monitor borders, protect wildlife, and even assist in disaster relief. When you add artificial intelligence into the mix, the possibilities multiply. These drones aren't just flying machines. They are tools of national development. Of course, the military angle is still central. Ethiopia's defense strategy now includes locally made drones that can handle reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, and even counter-drone operations. Abiy Ahmed has been very careful with his words, stressing that the goal is not to fuel conflict but to prevent it. That's an important distinction. These drones act as deterrents, protecting Ethiopia's sovereignty and economic progress from being undermined by external threats. But if we zoom out for a moment, this story isn't only about drones. 
It's about Ethiopia's larger transformation. Not too long ago, Ethiopia was known mainly for famine and poverty. Today, it's one of the fastest growing economies in the world, with infrastructure projects that rival those of much richer nations. From new highways to hydropower dams, from modernized agriculture to expanding telecommunications, Ethiopia is rewriting its narrative. The drones are just one symbol of that larger story, a story of resilience, innovation, and ambition. And here's the most exciting part. What Ethiopia is doing should serve as a blueprint for the rest of Africa. Other nations, especially those that are landlocked or heavily import dependent, can learn from this example. Instead of being at the mercy of global supply chains and foreign manufacturers, why not build capacity at home? Why not invest in your engineers, your innovators, your young people with big dreams? Ethiopia is showing that it can be done and that when it is done, the payoff is huge. Jobs are created, GDP is boosted, and national pride is restored. Some Ethiopians online have reacted with excitement, pointing out that this saves foreign currency, creates jobs, and opens doors for new industries. Others are more cautious, wondering if the project is sustainable or if it's just a political move. But even skeptics agree on one thing. The potential here is massive. If used properly, drones could transform agriculture, disaster management, mapping, exploration, and even emergency response. These are not just machines of war. They are tools for building a stronger nation. So where does this leave us? It leaves us looking at a new Ethiopia. Not the Ethiopia you might have imagined from old headlines, but a modernizing, ambitious country flipping its story. The Ethiopia you knew before has changed. This is the new Ethiopia, one that is taking flight quite literally. And if this momentum continues, it won't just be Ethiopia that rises, but the entire continent as other African nations take inspiration and follow suit. Whoa, what a journey, fam. We just flew through Ethiopia's incredible pivot from being landlocked and logistics challenged to innovating in the skies with homegrown drone production. Whether it's drones inspecting dams, monitoring crops or safeguarding borders, this is Ethiopia in full flight. If you're as inspired as I am, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss more stories from Africa's front lines of innovation. Drop a comment and tell me what excites you most about Ethiopia's drone revolution, the tech, the vision, the jobs. Let's talk about it. Until next time, stay curious, stay uplifted, and remember, Africa isn't just watching the future, it's building it. Peace.